All right, Pete Kaiser, 2019. Um, I, was, I wrote a story this morning about how things seem to be more relaxed. We talked about that. It's funny, we, you and I talk only about once a year, you know, <laughs> in this thing. You know, we, yeah. we get together as a team and we really go hard. And then so when we have this interview, oftentimes it's like, hey, how's it going? You know, yeah. those kind of things. Um, but I wrote a story about how um, seems to be, you remember your first year? Yeah. That you did this? Yeah. Um, at this point in the uh, the prep for the race, it was different, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, definitely more nerves for the first one. And it's been increasingly less every year, uh, especially this year and last year, being able to train here at home and, and just kind of have a, more weeks in advance to get everything in order and, and just right for race day. So it's a lot less stressful when you're not flying into town two days before the start and kind of repacking and reorganizing so right yeah and 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 talk about just briefly you know when you started you were single young man right Mm -hmm. out of of college kind of heading off on this dream and now it's a total different thing yeah it's a family event I mean it always was a family thing with my parents and 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 that but uh, now with Bethany and the kids and and, uh, their excitement uh, involvement and excitement and uh uh, Ari's old enough now to kind of understand what's going on and uh, you know Bethany's very supportive and so it's been fun juggling that and, and the racing and everything else it, it sure helps when we have decent weather here yeah well let's talk about the weather and your and in, in training you know this is really the first this kind of kicks off the season mm-hmm. and in a really cool way talk about uh, your prep that you've had this year yeah we kind of had a, a early winter that was looked like it was going to be shaping up to be like the last few where it uh, doesn't really materialize to be much snow or much cold weather, but um, about first week of December, things turned around and we got some snow and uh, started to freeze up. And the mid-December to mid-January is probably the best stretch of, of that time of year we've had since 2012, probably. So we we just about packed up and left end of November, uh, and I'm glad we didn't and stuck it out. And so a little bit of a slow start, but the last month has been very good and little bit of a meltdown last week but uh, compared to last year and some of the years before it's it's exciting to to look forward to a decent trail well and it's we talked about family but you have uh, how old's your daughter now one and a half one and a half so yep. coming back to daddy comes home at night it's a big deal now isn't it it's a total different deal than you know I remember the year and you and Richie were up at camping out and yeah. it it's not that it wasn't a big deal but it's a lot different now yeah I mean it's just it makes everything simpler when you can be home and and uh, help help in that aspect with the kids and everything else and just makes the dog training easier when you know we're completely set up here to do everything here as long as the weather cooperates so it's nice to not have to pack up and leave for two months and live out of a dog trailer <laughs> right uh, how the how's the team look this year good um, I think in training they've looked they look as good as ever you know um, but with that said there's tons of competition and it's really hard to have everything go just right for 35 to 40 hours so a lot of our training has been based on trying to get them to peak for this weekend so if everything comes together I think we'll have a pretty good race but a lot a lot can go wrong and it's hard to have everything go perfect so we'll, we'll see how it goes well along with the uh, the change in family um, you know, you, you're more experienced. You're obviously a veteran with some with a lot of success. Um, how talk about how your training has changed? I mean, I always say uh, Pete's doggy Yoda. You, you just really are in tune with the dogs, from my perspective. Um, how has your training changed from when you were first starting out to now? I mean, obviously it, it's got to have changed some. It has a little bit, but I've kept I've kept very close track of of all our training for the last. 11 or 12 years now so I can kind of go back and look and now that we've now that we've gathered a bunch of years of of uh, information on training I can go and compare all those years together and you know honestly the overall training hasn't changed a whole lot there's a lot of fine tuning and stuff like that but especially in the last four years we've found some success with what we're doing and we're basically running the same genetic group of dogs every year so I feel like it would be foolish to change too much especially when it's working so every year we try to fine-tune something and work on small stuff that we can, that will help us improve but uh, I've refrained from uh, trying anything too crazy and out of the box in training as long as it's as long as it's been working we're gonna stick with it until it doesn't work so that's been our philosophy at least for the last four years and the team seems happy yeah that's yeah we 
you know, we don't, I don't think we put on nearly as many miles as some people do. And a lot of our training is really dictated by the weather, but the weather has been so consistent for the last so many years. And that's why our training all looks very similar. So, you know, we get as much training in it as we can when the weather allows. And, and then there's times where we sit and wait it out and, or travel and, you know, just try to make it work. But, um, yeah, our training has basically stayed the same. Well, you've made some changes. I looked at the yard, and um, wow, it's it's different. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a really, really beautiful place now. I mean, you really mm-hmm. have you're really obviously taking um, the dog care into uh, obviously the the it's always the top thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but talk about some of the changes there. That's really nice out there. You made yeah. some really big changes to contend with weather. Yeah, we built some. They're really not a factor and you can't see them now, but we built some decks out there that will help, I think, a lot in the spring and fall when we have muddy muddy and rainy conditions. So they're kind of, they're up off the ground now. And uh, we, we, we built them late in the fall last year, so we didn't get to do a lot of testing and seeing how they work. But this spring and this summer, we'll get to get to see some of the advantages of that. I think it's going to be great. And some of the biggest changes within the dog team, like you were talking about training, the, I think some of the bigger changes over the years that have helped us get better is just the genetics of the team have improved, and we've slowly, you know, tried to breed better dogs and better dogs. So every year, we end up with a stronger gene pool of dogs, and they're all they've all been closely related now since 2012. But the goal every time we breed dogs is to come up with a gr- better dog and a better dog. So even though our training has stayed similar, the the gene pool. The idea is for that to get stronger and stronger, and I think we've, we're seeing that. Well, is that something, I mean, that when you were first starting out, is that something you considered as much as you do now? Is that kind of an evolution that, that now that's a, a, a huge part of the training, mm-hmm. uh, you know? Is that something that you, that does, you probably, evolved to? probably considered it more at the beginning, knowing that how important it was to have as good a dog as you could possibly have. So we... Um, you know, we bought some really good dogs to begin with, and bred those dogs um, with the uh, with the idea of creating a better team and a better team. And it's probably even taken for granted even more now that I've been working with some really good dogs for the last four or five years, and you start to get complacent maybe and think, well, this is just the norm. But you know, we still have to you still kind of have to clear your head sometimes and say, no, we we want even better better than what we've we have, and and work towards that. I'm gonna stop right there. Close this. I don't think it's on there much, but just in case. And we're going good, so this is awesome. Um, so let's talk about uh, your support system. Um, so this is Nick's second or third? Third. Third season with you. And um, and you have two teams, but one in the Bogus, one in the uh, 150, kind of like the first year he was here. Yep. Um, Talk about his contribution to the to the system and, and how well you talk about it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Nick's been a great help. He came over from Norway. Um, this is his third year, and his first year he's pretty green. He'd he'd work with dogs, but not a lot of racing experience and racing kennel experience. So he's grown by leaps and bounds the last three years. And um, last year he got qualified for Iditarod, and he's going to run Iditarod this year. So that's really exciting. It's a first for the kennel. A lot of logistics and extra planning and a, a really big group of dogs we've been training. So part of the reason he's running the Bogus this year is to keep this group of dogs healthy because we need twice the amount of dogs healthy for Iditarod start. So we're just trying to be careful with that and make sure he's got a nice, healthy, solid team for Iditarod start. But his help has been, um, you know, second to none. It's He's he's extremely responsible and, and um, does a great job with the dogs and just great to have around. Well, and then having that second hand, I watch you two together, and um, you're just like twins out there. Everybody, know, there isn't a lot of speaking. Yeah, in our third year now, you know, there's a lot. We're we're kind of similar, you know. I think we're both fairly organized, and and um, there's not a whole lot of communication. Um, but he he kind of understands how I operate, and I understand how he operates now, especially in our third year. So well, and that's um, what I mean. You, you that yeah. there, you're kind of. Uh, you know, it's like twins out there. Everybody's the the tasks are all happening, but there's it's silent. You mm-hmm. know, there's everybody. You and he seem to be on a very common wavelength about what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty clear understanding with what's going on. So we're excited for his Iditarod. It's a it's a it's a big deal, and uh, it'll be fun to see how it unfolds. Sure. Um, let's just briefly talk about your other support systems. You know, um, you're at the kind of the start here but over the summer and we made that video about it's 365 days you know mm-hmm. you've been cleaning the, the 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 dog 
kennel and um and nick isn't here through the summer so mm-hmm. you, you're on your own for the whole thing and and but you have spon- some sponsors that just talk about generally the sponsor uh piece of 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 kaiser racing yeah this this whole success su- being a successful musher or trying to be a successful musher is like a puzzle so there's a lot of little pieces that need to be involved and uh, the support from our, my family and friends and the community is all so important. The sponsorship from the financial aspect of things and, um, you know, our summer employment and, and every aspect because it doesn't, you know, it's in the snow machine that you park in the spring and get out when the snow flies. This is a year-round commitment. And, um, and so every little, every little bit of help that we get is a, is a big deal. Well, let's get into this race, K300 2019. Um, you and Richie probably and Mike Jr. probably know the trail more than anybody. Uh, what's the trail like? Actually, it's funny. Um, I haven't trained on the river almost at all this year. So I'm familiar with the trail just because I've been here for 30 years and I have a pretty good idea of what's gonna, what it's going to be like. But we've spent most of our year training on the tundra just to avoid overflow and uh, different things like that. So um, the actual trail from in front of town, I haven't used at all this year. A little bit up by Tuluksac on the river, but um, from here almost all the way just shy of Tuluksac, I haven't spent much time well, what on do you, the river what do you, training. But you, you should have a pretty good feel. Of yeah, what it's, it's going to be, be a like. fast. It's going to be a fast, fast trail. Uh, it was. It really looked like for the last month it was going to be maybe uh, one of the slower Cusco trails with all the loose snow we had. And, um, you know, with the potential of we almost always have some kind of wind and to have a little bit of a drifted in trail and have a little slower Cusco, that would have been interesting because we almost never get that. But the rain last week and the warm kind of put a crust right on top that snow and packed it down. And now we're going to have a very fast trail with better footing than normal because a lot of times we have a slick trail, but the dogs need that footing, too, to be able to to gain power and speed. And now they're going to have a combination of that footing and a slick slurp surface for the sled to slide on. So I wouldn't be surprised with the caliber of teams that are here this year that this record could fall this year. We'll see. The With this kind of a trail, um, in terms of uh, feet problems or anything like that, do you, do you see more um, at the bottom of the paws and stuff, picking up ice crystals and balling up? And, or do you, does there's, that make a factor? There's potential for that, but, um, you know, besides normal foot care that we do, you know, the dogs are always wearing booties, so they're... There's a lot of preventative maintenance, even on good trails. We're, we're wearing the dogs are wearing booties just to um, avoid any kind of freak injury or anything like that. So it just it is what it is, and we'll go do, once we're out there, we'll have a much better idea of how we have to deal with it. Um, training's been good, then you've been really happy with it. Yeah, especially for the last five weeks. I mean, it was it was frustrating there up until the end of November, for sure, um, looking like it was going to pan out to be another crappy winter. But it really got with it there the last month and a half, and we've. Probably the most enjoyable December of training I've had around here in about seven years, really. It's just, it almost has made it feel like I haven't done enough just because it's been so stress free. Yet, in fact, we've got out and done plenty, but it just hasn't involved traveling to the other side of the state or sliding sideways across glare ice for a month and stuff like that. So, or rain. Or rain. And I mean, yeah, so it's it's really felt, it's felt easy. Um, but Well, we were, we were remarking yesterday at the, at the drawing about how this is unbelievable. I mean, mm-hmm. Cusco swim with three feet of water, mm-hmm. um, 30 below, 60 below wind chill, all these different factors, blizzards, all these different things. And the weather forecast looks good. Yeah. Um, the temperatures seem to be perfect, zero to 15, maybe a little cooler. You're going to have a little bit of wind, but not the dramatic stuff we are used to. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's all in perspective, right? Because um, this trail actually probably isn't like an ideal trail it's not it's not what you'd call a perfect trail there's there's going to be some rough spots and some crust and it's a little harder than it would be perfect but when you compare it to the last few years it feels it feels awesome you know like to have some kind of trail to run on and right. not just ice and water and this and that so well and and then exciting. you don't you think that uh so then you know the the uh if you think of the of, of a of a race kind of as a chess game for example because mm-hmm. you guys are out there trying to figure out what people are doing and you have your game plan but you also have to be reactive to weather or whatever. And mm-hmm. so when you eliminate all that, then the chess game is different, isn't it? A little bit, yeah. I mean, it, it really still comes down to, you know, everybody's doing what they're doing and there's different different things being done and people running at different speeds. But the most important thing really just comes down to the chess game between you and your dog team and, and, and doing everything that 
that you can do to get that maximum performance out of them. So, and then, you know, if, if you, if you're in an opportunity near the end where you can react to what somebody else is doing to try to gain a position or whatnot, then, then that's the opportunity to do it. But for the majority of the race, it's a chess game between you and your team to make all the right calls and uh, do things right by the team. Sure. All right. Well, um, I think that's about it. I mean, good luck out there. It, it, it looks like you're going to have a great time. All right. Thanks, John. All right.